is just do a quick couple problems on how to calculate normal percents when they're not part of the 68.95.99.7. So there's some steps that you want to follow that will make it easier to understand. The first step is to draw your curve. Uh, it is helpful to, to draw all the tick marks for the standard deviations, but it's not necessary. We mainly want to know what area we're going to shade. So we're going to have to shade a region, and that's going to help us identify the lower and upper bounds, which the calculator is going to ask for. And once we know those, it kind of helps us uh, chug right along. And then after we know that information, we can just plug it in the calculator. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example. Okay, so if I have an example that says n of 150, comma 18, that means the normal distribution, this is my mean, so the first number represents my mean, and my second number represents my standard deviation. So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and draw your normal curve that includes those intervals and that mean. So here it is. I'm going to draw my normal curve as best as I can. And we're going to use that to find different information. So I went ahead and put my picture in a sleeve so that I don't have to keep drawing it. Um, but what we need to do is we need to find the percent above 187. So it's kind of hard to see, but this is 186. So 187 is here, so I draw my line. And then I'm going to shade everything to the right. So by doing that, it helps me realize what my lower bound and my upper bound is. This is 187, and so my lower is 187, and my upper is up here somewhere. You don't want to pick something too close. Sometimes the calculator has a function that's already there. You just want to pick a number that's way out there. So I would even think that 1,000 would be good enough. Okay, so now once you know your upper and your lower, you're able to use your calculator. Okay, so you need to hit the distribution button right here, which is blue and VARS with the VARS key. So I'm going to hit second distribution, and I'm going to choose number two, the normal CDF. Now, if your calculator is updated, it's going to take you through some questions. If it's not updated, you have to do some other stuff, so you'll have to come ask me separately. Okay, so my lower bound is right here. The lower part of my curve is 187. The upper bound, I'm going to choose a huge number, and a 1,000 should be huge enough. The first thing, the mu, that's the mean, 150, and the sigma, that's the standard deviation, 18. And then I enter that, and that tells me that I get a 0 0.0199. So that means 1.99% of my data or uh, anything above 187, okay? So 1.899. And you could round it to 2 because that's a lot of 0.99, okay? All right, so again, for that one, I started by figuring out where I was going to shade, and then I figured out my upper and my lower. Okay, the next one is the percent below 140, so put that in. And so what I need to do first is I need to find my lower bound, which my lower, I need to pick something way down here. So I think picking something like zero will work. If you want to pick negative 1,000, that will work too. You just don't want to pick 90 because there could be points past that. And then my upper bound is going to be 140 because that's what that line was. So again, I go back to my second distribution, normal CDF. My lower bound, oops, i got to start that again. Second distribution. My lower bound, I'm going to say, is 0. My upper bound is 140. Again, my, stand, my mean is 150, and my standard deviation is 18. So when I hit Enter, I get 0.2893. So that tells me that 28.9% of the data is below 140. All right, the next one with the same problem, what happens if I say it's between 150 and 170? So that's 115, and that's 170. So it's everything in between there. 
Well, again, you still have to figure out your lower and your upper. And this one, the lowest part of my shaded region is 115, and the upper part of my shaded region is 170. So those are actually pretty nice. So again, second distribution, normal CDF. My lower is 115. My upper is 170. My mean's the same, and my standard deviation is the same. And so it's 0 0.8408. So I would say that 84.1% of data is between 115 and 170, okay? So again, the first thing you do is you draw the curve and you shade the region. Shading the region really helps you get a visual picture of what's above, below, the lower, the upper bounds. Let's look at another example. This one we're going to work backwards, and instead of finding the percentile, I'm going to give you the percentile, and you're going to find the cutoff point or the cutoff value. So let's say we're working with a normal model that has a mean of 78 and a standard deviation of 5. I didn't draw all the um, curves because or the tick marks. That's okay for what we're doing. So the first one says, what value represents the 80th percentile? Or, I'm sorry, the 90th percentile. Well, the 90th percentile on the curve is everything 90% and below, right? That's 90% and below. This right here is 10%. So when we do this, we're still going to go to the um, distribution button, the second distribution, but this time we're going to do the inverse norm, number three. So we're going to do the inverse norm. My area under the curve is the shaded region, which is 90%, percent point ninety, and then I need to put my mean of 78 and my standard deviation of 5 in. And so the cutoff percent or the cutoff point to get the 90th percentile is 84.4. Okay. All right, if we look at the next one, what represents the 20th percentile? Same idea. It's an ugly curve, but here's 20%. And here's 80% on the right. So we're trying to find out what the low 20% is. So again, I'm going to go second distribution to go to... Um, my number three inverse norm. My area this time is 20%. My mean and my standard deviation are the same. So I hit enter. And so the cutoff for number to get to the 20th percentile is 73.79, which I would be comfortable rounding to 73.8. Okay. The last type of question you might have here is one that's got a couple more steps because it asks for the IQR. Well, the IQR is the middle 50%, right? So if you think about this, I need to know what this area is. This is the 25%. And I need to know what this area is, is the 75%. So I need to do two problems. I need to find out what my 25% cutoff is and my 75% cutoff. So I'm going to go back to distribution, inverse norm, move everything over. And so this time, 0.25. This cutoff point right here is 74.63. And then let's do the next one here. So I'm going to go back to inverse norm. And this time, it's the 75 percentile. And that cutoff is 81.37. Now, this is actually quarter one, quartile one, and this is quartile three, because 25% is the quartile one, and 75% of the data is quartile three. So to find the IQR, I'm just going to subtract those. So 81.37 minus 74.63. And so my IQR is 6.74. Okay. So remember when you're doing any of these problems, the steps that make it a little easier is that you start off by drawing the curve, shading the region, the lower and upper bound, figuring those out, and then using the calculator. If you're going backwards, once you have this, the, the region, the shaded region, then you just use the inverse norm. That's it. And make sure you come to class if you have any questions.